Hello, uh, we will continue our discussion on uh, computer networks and internet protocols. We are uh, discussing on application layer protocols or different protocols which are prominent in the application layer. And today's discussion will be primarily uh, on uh, FTP or uh, but before that we will have a uh, quick overview of the client server system. Right? Now, this client server paradigm is uh, I believe that uh, well known to all of us, but it is for the sake of uh, uh, understanding we will relook at the thing. Now, this is a as we understand this client server paradigm is a is a predominant paradigm in our uh, for application different application running over the internet. It helps us two application talking to each other uh, across the network right. So, what is the basic philosophy? So, there is a server program and corresponding client program right like we know that there should be a, if I am doing FTP there should be FTP server and corresponding FTP client. Similarly, if I am doing a uh, say uh, telnet, so it, there should be a telnet server and there should be a telnet client and like this right. The server and client can be on the same machine or in the different machine. So, if it is a different machine then the uh, client server needs to know that the client needs to know where the server is and make a connection before establish a connection before the communication going on. So, what we are trying to do at the un, at the basic uh, at the underlying level we have some applications which will work over the network and basically rely on this network typically TCP IP or uh, OSI or network models and the application can run over the uh, this network right. So, uh, later on in this course we will look at some other things like web services service oriented architecture, but the predominant uh, application layer uh, processing or what we say application layer communication is uh, is will be done will be seeing the client server model. So, standard model for developing network applications. So, as we are discussing a notion of client server a server is a process that is offering some service right as, as we normally know and a notion of a client is a process that is requesting for a service right. Like if I have a print server a print print client is requesting for the service in the for the printer. You many of you are accustomed with network level printer where over the network we request for that service. Even these days we are using uh, network level uh, means uh, a paradigm which is where you can connect or project something uh, display something using a uh, using the underlying network right. So, that is anything uh, any any such applications which is giving service has to be this is typically known as the client server and the request uh, requesting process is the client process right. Server or client may be running on the different machine or in the same, same machine right. If it is on the same machine or different machine the way of handling the whole thing remains same. Server waits for the request from the client. So, in other sense uh, if we look at server is always active waiting for the request from the client to happen right. One of the very popular uh, pa paradigm is our uh, HTTP server right. A any, any document we want to access over the internet uh, over the uh, using our browser. So, what we see that HTTP colon slash slash www say IITKGP dot ac dot in right. The, so, there are two things the, the IIT KGP server which is which is there in somewhere in IIT Kharagpur network or somewhere in the internet will respond back once the client this type of request is there. So, this browser my typical browser or your browser is acting as a uh, HTTP client and the server machine is responding to that. The server is always waiting for a client to be request. So, it is waiting for the client to send their request and respond accordingly based on that uh, the if the respond is successful and the format is correct etcetera that is other part of the things, but it will respond to nothing. Whereas, the uh, so I have a HTTP server typically known as HTTP D or HTTP daemon in terms of Linux or uh, stuff like that and I have a HTTP client which is HTTP client or typically if it is a HTTP client we we this is manifested by our uh, standard browsers web browsers. 
So, what we see uh, there is a server and there can be multiple clients. So, immediately two things pop up that whether the server will serve one client after another that is whether it is a iterative server one server serves it second server etcetera etcetera like that. So, it that can be iterative server or all the servers all the clients are served together. So, I have a concurrent server right. So, number of requests are being served together and the limit based on that the resource availability etcetera the number of servers can be served together right. And this whether we will look at in couple of sites that whether it is iterative or the concurrent based on the application requirement right. Some some uh, resources where the server is handling may be has to be done iterative way. So, the other things has to wait or the some of the most of the cases it can be served uh, concurrently like typically uh, HTTP servers. So, that can be served concurrently. So, typical scenario the server process starts on some computer system initialize itself and then goes to uh, sleep waiting for the client to request right. So, this is the thing a client process starts as an as the client needs it uh, either on the same system or some other system right sends a request to the server. So, this is the typical scenario and when are uh, whether whatever the client server paradigm things are there that has to be the this sort of mechanism has to be there. There can be different way of handling some can have uh, num more than one connect is connection to be established some single connection to be established that is a uh, protocol dependent, but nevertheless this has to be uh, satisfied. When the server process finished uh, providing its service to the client the server goes back to sleep waiting for the next client request to arrive. So, once it is the finished it is the it will goes back to sleep the process repeats when the things are there. This is the very vanilla type of uh, operation, but it describes the things how it works. So, as we are discussing the role of client and server process uh, are asymmetric they are not that cannot they may not be symmetric and two types of servers there one is as we are discussing iterative server another uh, category of server what we call concurrent server which serves concurrently and iteratively one by one. So, iterative server used when the server process knows in advance how long it takes to handle each request and handle each, each request itself and type of things or, or more specifically when there is a requirement which goes for a iterative things the resource allocation should be done one after another. So, that all cannot bump into the things like I have a some resource uh, some uh, say uh, some sort of a uh, resource to be reserved and type of thing and I cannot do concurrently maybe I may have to do it directly one by after one after another ok. And in most of the cases we have some estimate that how much time it will take in uh, working on it. So, that I can have um, one step other. The single copy of the server runs all the time right and a client may have to wait if the server is busy right or uh, in this case one server a one one copy of the server or the server process is only one process. So, it is running all the time it serves goes to the next 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 next. So, it is a iterative way of handling the thing whereas, concurrent server where used when the amount of work required to handle a request is unknown right. So, the concurrent server is required when the amount of work required to handle a request is not known right the server starts another process to handle each request right. So, the server starts uh, other process or in other sense uh, my requirement or my way of delivery is concurrent right. Like I, I, ha I have a say IIT KGP website or some my own website or something which I can serve concurrently. So, there is no way. So, a copy of server caters to the client uh, client request in a dedicated fashion. So, this is important right. So, a copy of the server. Um, so, what it does it is those who are accustomed with some sort of OS programming uh, there is a concept of forking right. So, forking a child process. So, some sort of forking a child process the server fork a child process which goes on serving the request of that particular client uh, and then it again comes back and listen to the uh, start listening to the client request right. So, it makes a self copy of the things which goes on serving the things as many of the copies of the server there can be many client requests. So, I, the as much as based on the uh, resource availability the amount of 
the number of copies we will be uh, going on uh, serving the client request. So, whether uh, TCP or UDP again what is the requirement of the application before start of communication the connection has to be established between the host right. It can be a uh, connection oriented service like FTP type of things or it can be a connection less service right either UDP like say DNS update and type of things where uh, or DNS uh, resolution that can be a uh, uh, UDP type of services based on the what the application needs right. So, if you see what we require to make a connection established uh, we require uh, 5 things right that uh, IP of the server port of the server where the server is listening right. So, what uh, so if if in our terminology what we in network terminology what we see that what we see that to identify a system we require a IP address to identify a process in the system we require a port. So, IP plus port combinedly defines the process of the thing as the server process. So, I require the IP of the server and IP of the I port number of the server uh, process where it is listening. Uh, on the other hand I require a client IP of the client right where, where the communication is uh, other part of the communication and the port of the client where through which it is the client process is communicating. So, this fourth thing and is apart from that we require that underlining protocol. So, in most of our cases what we work on is the uh, internet protocol is our predominant protocol. So, it is most of the cases is the IP protocol which uh, but nevertheless it defines that thing this. Uh, combination. Now, if it is the same machine the IP will be same. So, server IP client IP will be same, but nevertheless the port number will not be same even the protocol is also same. So, this port will distinguish that two connections that is why as I was telling that if I open up a HTTP uh, server right uh, I, I am requesting for I have multiple browser. Uh, in my windows open and I am requesting say IIT KGP page 1 and some other things say IIT Delhi something IIT Chennai IIT Madras and type of things and but uh, it is not like that that request of this will go to the thing right. So, they are in they are this five triple distinguishes uh, stuff distinguishes every connection or defines every connection. Now, uh, so what we require to develop a, a network application. So, at the data link layer we require ethernet, at the network layer we require IP, at the transport layer use of TCP or UDP and there is a concept of Barclay socket. We will do some socket level programming at some part of this uh, course, uh, show you that how things works, but nevertheless uh, there is a Barclay socket interface. So, socket is a uh, what we can say it is a uh, methodology or a mechanism by which inter process communication or IPC works right. So, it is a uh, mechanism by which this inter process communication works. It is used to allow one process to speak to another on same or different machine right. So, uh, so what we say that I establish a socket between these two processes and this IPC or inter process communication works over this socket or those who are uh, or uh, all of you have uh, some uh, working experience on C or type of languages. So, what you see that if you open a file in a uh, C uh, language what we require a file ID to communicate right rest of the things right. Here also I get a socket ID. So, I establish a com com communication like using this over 5 tuple to be satisfied and once that is done I have that socket ID which allows me to transfer traffic uh, transfer the data over the things right. So, it is used to allow the process to speak to one another same or different machine some analogy like telephone is used to allow one person to another in ok that that is a very uh, straightforward analogy that I, it allows to this, but socket gives me a mechanism or method to have this IPC or inter process communication to happen right. So, in order to establish a socket, so what we do I uh, the socket 
the socket mechanism to be supported by the system in most of the Linux system they are supported. So, what you require? You require a uh, socket to be opened at the client end. So, if I a server end, so server opens up a uh, what we say some sort of a hub socket right. So, it is own IP own uh, port and the protocol right and, oh, and wait on that port that is client to get the request client on its other end opens up another hub socket like its IP port and the protocol and and it knows that client server IP right that has to be known right. I if I want to do a FTP to a remote machine I need to know the IP or the URL or the name of the things like you know that IIT www dot dot in uh, unless you know this name uh, uh, then you can't find the IIT KGB page. Now, this name will not be applicable for any communication over the uh, uh, network right. So, network layer understands only the IP address. So, that has to be resolved by the DNS. So, DNS returns the IP. So, in other sense I should know the IP address in some way or other uh, to of the destination. So, the client uh, sends a some sort of a connection request to the server server on things if it is find the format etc everything protocol wise matching then establishes this 5 tuple and that establishes a socket between these two client server uh, client and server. Using this socket ID the rest of the communication goes on like data transfer and other etc both way etc. So, when two process located on the same machine to communicate we define association define association and a socket. So, these are the as we have discussed so it will have a protocol IP. Uh, local IP or I say client IP, client port, server IP, server port. So, uh, a typically also called a hub association as we are discussing that at the things. So, protocol local IP, local port or protocol client IP, client port or uh, protocol remote that is server IP, server port and uh, it once that communication path is there established and the goes on. So, that is that is in some sense defines that how this client server protocol works and all of our discussion what we are working on like most of the protocols are client server based as of now right. So, one of the protocol very predominant protocol is the FTP we are mostly used to that. Uh, so, uh, so it has a uh, so what it, it facilitates uh, transfer of files over network it is a client server model often works with TCP or connection oriented reliable service and also 10 let protocol. The definition or the spec of the FTP is defined in RFC uh, 959 those who are interested can look into those RFCs, RFC. So, a, a FTP uses TCP at the transport layer. So, it is the application layer down the layer down layer is the transport is the TCP to provide reliable end to end connections and implements two type of connection managing the uh, data transfer. So, first of all it uses TCP uh, layer in the transport uh, mode and then it implements two connection. So, one for control and one for data we will come to that. The TCP client initiates the first connection referred to as control connection right and well known port 21. So, that initial connection is the port 21 it is it is on this port that the FTP server listens for the accepts of the new connection. So, that means FTP server if Linux time I say FTPD it once it initializes or in other our socket terms makes a hub socket and listens to that port 21 is any FTP request there sort of thing and the FTP client coming out from any port it does not matter and then hits to that particular server at port 21 right. So, it is the default port of port 21. So, when you give FTP by default it knows that it goes to port 21. If you want to change the port 21 to some other port at the server end if you have changed then the that particular port to be uh, the connection request should come to that particular port. Suppose the port is instead of 21 it is say uh, something uh, 8888 or uh, something right. So, it has to be colon 8888. So, that it says that you go for that service at that particular port, but anyway we, without going to that complications we see that it port 21 is the default port. The control connection is used for all control commands a client server uses to log on to the server manipulates file terminates SSN etcetera 
right. This is also connection across which FTP server will send messages to the client in response to this control command etc. So, those are those are also defined in the things. We will see that some of the popular control commands, data commands etc. at the uh, end of this uh, lecture. The second connection of the FTP is referred to the data connection. So, typically the data connection is established at port 20. So, 21 is the control, port 20 is the data connection. However, depending on the how the data connection is established, both the client server might be might use ephemeral ports. So, that can it may happen that 21 is the control panel, but the client server can agree upon to use a, uh, some other ephemeral port for that thing. FTP transfers data over the data connection. FTP only opens a data connection when the client issues a command requiring a data transfer, right? Such as request to retrieve a file or list the list of files, etc. Defined connection. We will again, we'll, as I was mentioning, I will see, we will uh, I will show you some standard commands. Anyway, those are things available in any book or any over the network, but nevertheless, we will popular commands, uh, data, data transfer commands also uh, will uh, will show you. The data connection is unilateral. File can transfer data only from client to server or from server to client or not both. So, that is one way either this or this. So, it is not uh, the both can cannot go simultaneously. Right. The data connection can be initiated either by the client or the server. The data connection initiated by the server are active while those initiated by the client are called passive. Right. So, it can be initiated by the both the things and uh, the connection established by the server are called active connections or the initiated by the client are passive. So, uh, if we look at the basic uh, operations, so, so it is a client server model. So, it is based on what we have discussed at the initial part of this lecture. So, connection is uh, control connection is typically port 21 uses to send and receive FTP commands. Data connection is typically port 20 uh, used to upload and download files, right. Process the data transfer process uh, two type of things are processes are there. One is the data transfer process or uh, or let us refer it as DTP establishes the connection and managing the data channel. Another what we say protocol interpreter or PI right. So, interprets the protocol let us let DTP be controlled using commands received from the control channel. So, the one is protocol interpreter to interprets the protocol and the DTP a data process data transfer protocol uh, uses the command to, um, to transfer the files. So, uh, again uh, to continue with the basic operations, so to we as we have discussed there are two mode, one is active mode control uh, connection uh, port client uh, the large port number server at port 21, data communication port is uh, at the client is n plus 1 server is port 20 right. So, this is the in active mode in the passive mode control connection port. So, client a large port number should be more than 1023 and server is port 21, data connection client is, is again n plus 1, server large port number of uh, any greater than 1023 that it means that not those reserved port or restricted port. So, file transfer mode can be either ASCII uh, that is text, HTML and etcetera, etcetera or it can be binary like uh, doc, PDF, some media files so on. So, you need to define I can define that the type of things whether it is ASCII or binary or bin uh, can be defined and can be transferred. So, uh, same thing if we try to look at that the client FTP is built uh, with a protocol interpreter, a data transfer process and a user interface. So, if you if you have, have your FTP client like there are very uh, there are several open source client. So, you it has a user interface and underlining it has a protocol uh, interpreter and a data data transfer process or PI and DTF right a uh, uh, DTP data transfer process. So, what it does at the server end also uh, there is a uh, protocol interpreter and DTP. So, it uh, one is for the control connection one is the data connection and we have two file system right at the client side one file system and also server side two file system. So, either file data can be transferred from here to here or other way, but we have two file systems. So, uh, the at the client end client has a user interface to do that right. 
there are command line things also those who are accustomed can do FTP connection and do the commands at the basic uh, at the at the command line. So, uh, FTP clients user interface communicates with the protocol interpreter which uh, manages the control connection the same thing PI translate any application specific command to the RFC architect FTP command. So, that if there is a application specific command, so it should be RFC architect FTP command it has to be there otherwise the uh, server side will not understand or the same thing true for server to client side. So, processes uh, command and then communicates this control commands to the server end. The FTP server PI receives this command and then initiates the appropriate processes to receive to service the client request right. If the request require the transfer of data, if there is a data transfer involved, the data management is performed by these uh, DTPs right both the end and both client server applications right. So, first the PIs, PI will take care of that uh, control connection established and if there is a data transfer involved then the DTPs will come into play. After the completion of the data transfer, the data connection is closed, control is returned to the PIs of the client and server applications and only one data transfer can occur at each connection. If multiple data transfer are required on a single FTP session, one distinct control connection will be opened for each transfer right. Either it can ma ma manage at the upper level uh, that uh, going on doing that at the or user interface or the uh, FTP client program takes care or the individual data connection has to be established right for the each data transfer. So, if you look at the user perspective, so from what is the user perspective? Connect to the remote host, uh, navigate and manipulate uh, the directory structure right. I can go to the directory structure of the remote host or the, if there is a permission is there I can manipulate. List files available for transfer define the transfer mode, transfer type and data structure right uh, once I want to transfer. Transfer data to and from the remote host. So, either it can be from client to the server or server to the client disconnect the remote host whenever the whenever the work is over. So, that can be that they can be the typical uh, way of looking at it. Uh, so, this is a typical scenario say workstation FTP client request to FTP server. So, it log on to the FTP server, navigate to the correct remote directory uh, right to uh, where the data is there, specify the file type that what sort of file is there, send that meant whether you require binary, ASCII and type of things, send the file put uh, that is the data. If I want to retrieve file then get process that terminate the session by quitting it. So, this is a typical way of looking at it when I put some data from this uh, local host to this remote host or where it acts as a FTP client and this is the FTP server. So, there is another concept called TFTP. Uh, so, it is uh, I thought that it would be good to know. So, it is a uh, for known as trivial FTP protocol. So, it is a low payload FTP protocol right. So, typically uh, widely used in uh, say you want to upload a configuration file in a router or network device and type of things where much resource uh, are not available this TFTP plays a important role. This simplistic approach has many benefits over traditional FTP uh, because it is a very simple vanilla approach to the things used by diskless devices to download firmware at, at boot time right. So, diskless uh, devices used by any automated process for which the assignment of a user ID or password is not feasible that means there are that is that much resource is not there. Small application size allowing it to be implemented in various uh, devices right, various low resource uh, devices and in, in environment where resource there is resource requirement is not is much layer or, or less or constrained resource requirement. TFTP is implemented on the top of the UDP user data gram protocol this is interesting right. FTP is typically over TCP. TFTP is typically over UDP that it is not reliable transfer. The TFTP client initially sent a retry request to the well known port 69. So, it is not that uh, our port 21 uh, like that. The server and the client then 
determine the port that we will use for the rest of the connection. So, initially that request 69 and then agreed upon a thing. TFTP lacks most of the features of FTP and instead it is limited only reading a file from a server or writing a file to a server. So, it is more of a uh, updating or reading or updating the server. TFTP has no provision for user authentication uh, in that respect it is a insecure protocol, but the, the places or the, but, but the situation where we use uh, we uh, it plays an important role like up, updating a firmware and those things where uh, where I can ensure security by different mechanisms right. I, I that uh, compromising that channel may be more difficult because there may not be external connection like that other things. Then we have some quickly go to some commands these are uh, available in the books these are these are taken from uh, different sources including books and what I thought that it will be uh, these are the typical command it will be good. So, user pass ACT etc like user information, password, account information, real installation, logout, aborting previous commands are some of the access commands. Some of the file management command like uh, CWD change to another uh, directory or delete to delete a file or MKD making a directory and so and so forth. So, these are some of the commands which are uh, file management command. These are some of the data formatting command that we are discussing type to define whether it is ASCII or FD or what sort of file is there, it uh, structure whether it is a file or record or page, mode whether it is stream, block or compress mode and type of thing. So, these are all definition we can de define which are related to the data formatting and there are file transfer command like uh, RETR, retrieve files, STOR, store files and so and so forth right. So, there are several sets of uh, transfer formats there is a command called uh, stat to return the status status of that uh, set of files. So, with this what we see uh, uh, in this particular today's lecture we primarily discuss is that how what is the basic philosophy of client server we just introduce the socket program we will in uh, in some of the subsequent uh, lectures or some of the session we will try to we will show you some how this programming can work and how we can write your own network level programs into over using this socket. So, that we will so we discussed about FTP one of the very predominant application layer protocol used for primarily for transferring data uses two ports one for control and the data port and also another variant of FTP which is a low payload. Uh, FTP or TFTP which is used for several uh, firmware updates and other configuration updates in devices with constrained resources. So, with this let us stop uh, let us stop up our today's discussion. Thank you.